Hello students. Today we will be starting with the chapter class 12th wave optics. First of all we have to read about the difference between a ray and a wave and then we will deal with the basic concept of wave optics. Now firstly there was two models issued that was first was corpus color Mother model which was generally predicted by Newton's theory and Newton explained it. The other one was wave model which was predicted by a Dutch scientist Heidegger. Corpuscular model explained reflection, refraction, rectilinear propagation of light rectilinear propagation of light and this all was basically we can say that we were having a concept called that light travels in a straight line in vacuum so Newton was having his dilemma, uh, his, uh, sorry, not dilemma, we can say. So, Newton was having his name at that particular time. So, every physicist community was totally ready to agree with Newton in every aspect. But when Heidegger came into existence, he told that whatever Newton is explaining is basically due to the particle nature of light. And light also has the other nature that is called as the wave nature. So Heiden proposed that light can also be considered through wave model also. But his model was not accepted readily until Young's performed an experiment called as Dahl-Slit experiment and Maxwell gave an equation for propagation of light on the variation of electric field and magnetic field for electromagnetic waves stating the condition that light does not only travel in vacuum it can also travel in a medium and due to that firstly it was assumed that wave needs a medium to travel so in that case, if a light is traveling without medium, that is in vacuum as per Newton and corpuscular models, this implies that light cannot be considered as a wave. But due to Maxwell theory of electromagnetic wave, it was readily agreed that yes, wave not only needs a medium to travel, but there are some waves that can travel without medium also that are electromagnetic waves. And that is why light can also travel in vacuum and it exhibits uh, in a medium also it can travel and hence light exhibits dual nature. One is particle nature that is ray optics that is geometrical optics and one is wave nature it exhibits the light exhibits wave nature also it exists under the properties of waves also and that is called as wave optics or the other name given as physical optics. How can we uh, predict that? Yes, it has waves. It has the wave nature. You might have seen on a currency note, like for example on a 2000 rupees note, on a 500 rupees note, there is a strip. Correct? When you just see that strip at various angles, you would notice that the color of those strips of the same strip continuously keeps on changing. Why is it so? Why the soap bubbles when viewed at different angles shows different colors? Why DVD when viewed at different angles shows different colors? Why 
the shadows are not very very dark why the polaroid glasses have a much greater effect than a uh, ordinary glass why all these phenomenons these phenomenons are basically related to interference diffraction polarization effects that can be caused with the effect of light only and that is why here to study these these phenomenons of interference diffraction and polarization we need to agree that light travels in a wave properties also that is light exhibits particle nature when it exhibits particle nature it is called as ray optics and when light is considered to be a wave nature it is called as wave optics the branch of physics that deals with the wave nature of light is called as wave optics or physical optics that is dependent on the phenomenon of interference diffraction and polarization now what did huygen actually say what was his theory and what was his basically predictions now we will study this just note it down so we can say the basic difference between geometrical optics and your wave optics if the dimensions of your body is larger compared to the wavelength of light it is geometrical optics if dimensions of body is larger to that of wavelength of light is larger to the wavelength of light then we say that it comes under the section of geometrical optics and when the dimensions of a body are comparable to the wavelength of light dimensions of body are comparable to the wavelength of light then it is called as wave optics everything is related to the wavelength of light when the dimensions of your body is larger to the wavelength of light it is called as geometrical optics and when the dimensions of the body are comparable to the wavelength of light it is called as wave optics now here we have to read a basic term that is called as wave front so now we are starting with wave optics and the first term that comes in our mind is wave front how will you define a wave front the definition says the continuous locus of all the particles vibrating in same phase is called as wave front meaning when a normal lake has a steady water surface at its top and we suddenly drop the stone into it what will happen the moment the stone will touch the water layer at the top it will disturb its water particles and every particle will continue to disturb the other particle in every direction and hence you will see that the disturbance comes out in the outward direction in the form of spherical waves correct jab pani mein hum patthar dalte hain तो पानी के अंदर से हमें बाहर कुछ वेव्स आती हुई कुछ लहरें आती हुई दिखाई देती हैं स्पेरिकल डायरेक्शन में राइट 
सर्कुलर डायरेक्शन जिसको हम पेंडिकुलरली अगर कंप्लीट करेंगे तो बी सर्कल सो वी कैन से एट कर सर्कुलर और सर्कल दैट पर्टिकुलर शेप ऑफ द रीजन इन विच द वेव्स आर द डिस्टरबेंस इज द वाइब्रेशंस आर कमिंग आउट कंटीन्यूअसली एंड साइमल्टेनियसली इन ऑल डायरेक्शंस दैट इज कॉल्ड एज वेव फ्रंट सारे डायरेक्शंस में एक साथ फैलता हुआ डिस्टरबेंस नजर आता है उसे हम क्या कहते हैं वेव फ्रंट वेव का फ्रंट मतलब जैसा आपको वेव जिस शेप में बाहर आती हुई दिखेगी दैट वो सामने से जो आपको दिखेगी दैट इज कॉल्ड एज वेव फ्रंट बात समझ में आ गई वेव फ्रंट के लिए देर आर मेनी टाइप ऑफ सोर्सेस सो शेप्स विल बी डिफरेंट फॉर ईच टाइप ऑफ सोर्स फॉर अ पॉइंट सोर्स द वेव फ्रंट विल बी स्टेडिकल वेव फ्रंट फॉर अ लाइन सोर्स The wave front will be cylindrical wave front, and for an infinite or a distant source, source at some distance that is sun or something, you have plane wave front. Now, how these wave fronts are made and how these shapes are decided, that is given by the considerations of by the theory proposed by Huygens. That is Huygens' principle. Now, we noted down this part. Then we'll come again to this that how these wave fronts are formed. Correct? <coughs> noted down. So now we are starting with the term Huygens' principle. C. It helps us. to provide a general geometric method to determine the shape of the wave front at any point at any particular time if the shape of the wave front at earlier time is already known matlab light ke wave front ki shape kisi particular aage time pe batane ke liye jo hamare liye method hai wo kya hai huygens principle par आपको उससे पहले वाले टाइम का वेव फ्रंट पता होना चाहिए सो इट प्रोवाइड्स अस अ ज्योमेट्रिक मेथड टू डिटरमाइन द शेप ऑफ अ वेव फ्रंट एट एनी later time if the shape of a front at earlier time or instant is already known correct अगर आपको पहले शेप वेव फ्रंट की कैसी थी ये पता है तो आप बाद में किसी पर्टिकुलर टी टाइम बाद उसकी वेव फ्रंट की शेप कैसी होगी ये आप डिटरमाइन कर सकते हैं किसकी मदद से विद हेल्प ऑफ हाइगंस प्रिंसिपल नाउ व्हाट डज हाइगंस प्रिंसिपल स्टेट राइट नाउ इट डी इट स्टेट्स दैट ईच पॉइंट ऑन अ गिवन वेव फ्रंट एक्ट as a point source or a fresh source of new disturbance each point so first part is each point on a given wave front acts as a fresh source of new disturbances which are called as secondary disturbances these secondary disturbances are 
कॉल्ड एज सेकेंडरी वेवलेट्स एंड दी वेवलेट्स ओरिजिनेटेड स्प्रेड आउट इन ऑल डायरेक्शंस मतलब सपोज कीजिए ये कोई एक पॉइंट सोर्स है इफ दिस पॉइंट सोर्स इज डिस्टर्ब सो एवरी पर पार्टिकल और एवरी पॉइंट नियर इट विल ऑल्सो गेट डिस्टर्ब सम वर्ड इट विल हैव अ क्लस्टर वी कैन से दैट सपोज दे हैव अ क्लस्टर इन दिस डायरेक्शन ऑल द पार्टिकल्स आर सेट अप इन लाइक दिस when this particle will be disturbed the stone will be dropped on and it will touch down to the top layer of the water on this particular particle so this particle will cause a disturbance here also this direction this direction in every direction it will transfer its disturbance right so now it will gain the energy of disturbance it will also gain the energy it will also gain so every particle will in every direction will gain the energy of disturbance due to which these particles will be the new sources for the disturbance to be caused in further forward direction agar ye ek source tha disturbance ka to isne baaki sab ko disturb kiya jab stone water ke top layer pe kisi particle se takrayega to wo particle har direction mein apni energy transfer karega जब वो ट्रांसफर करेगा तो उसने अगल बगल जितने भी पार्टिकल्स थे वट एवर एनर्जी इट हैज गिवन टू दैट पार्टिकल्स तो एवरी पार्टिकल विल नाउ बी अ न्यू सोर्स ईच पॉइंट ऑन अ गिवन डिफरेंट एक्ट एज अ फ्रेश सोर्स ऑफ न्यू डिस्टर्बेंस अब ये सारे ही नए सोर्सेज ऑफ डिस्टर्बेंस हो गए नाउ these sources says they are point sources so it will have a spherical wave front and since this is also a point source this is also a point source so these will also have a spherical wave front when these will have a spherical wave front we can say that these spherical wave fronts these small spherical wave fronts originated from each point fresh source will now act as a secondary disturbance that is secondary wavelet and these secondary wavelets the tangential envelope formed by these secondary wavelets will give rise to a new secondary wave front in forward direction so ab kya hoga लेटर टाइम टी पे ये डिस्टरबेंस जब किसी स्पीड से टी टाइम के साथ में कोई डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल करेगा तो ये यहां पहुंचेगा हर पर्टिकुलर पार्टिकल पे और जब हर पार्टिकल अपने आप से ही एक नया सोर्स बन गया तो उस पर सेक्सफेरिकल वेव फ्रेंड्स बन जाएंगे जो अपने आप कहेंगे सेकेंडरी वेवलेट्स और इनके डिस्टर्बेंस होने से इनको जब हम टेंजेंशियली आप एक एनवल पे इनक्लोज कर देंगे तो अब ये कहलाएगा आपका सेकेंडरी वेव फ्रंट नाउ since this is the shape of your secondary wave front each point on this particular secondary wave front will again act as a fresh source and they will have a secondary disturbance which will be called as secondary wavelets and now again you will join them so that will be that will again be a secondary wavelet so this will be a primary wave wave front and this will be a secondary wave front if it is a point source If it is a plane uh, source, let us suppose plane wave front. So every point will act as a fresh source. Or when every particular wave front will fresh source, will get these all the new sources. Then in this secondary disturbance will cause, and it will make spherical wavelets. Which will be secondary wavelets. In secondary wavelets, when you join them together, what will happen? What will be the new envelope? 
आपके लिए एक नया वेव फ्रंट इस तरीके से लाइट इन वेव फ्रंट के जरिए आगे मूव करती है अब ये नए सोर्स डिस्टर्बेंस के हो जाएंगे इन पे वापस आप सेकेंडरी स्पेरिकल वेवलेट्स बना लोगे और ये स्पेरिकल वेवलेट जब आप टेंडेंशियली ज्वाइन करोगे तो वापस वेव फ्रंट बनेगा यानी कि इट विद द लाइट विल मूव इन फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो लाइट फॉर्म्स वेवलेट्स एंड वेव फ्रंट्स टू मूव इन फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन एंड दिस इज द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ हाइगन उसने ये कहा कि लाइट जो है वेव फ्रंट्स और वेवलेट्स की मदद से आगे ट्रेवल करती है इन अ वे कि हर बार जो डिस्टर्बेंस कॉज होता है ईच पॉइंट ऑफ द डिस्टर्बेंस विल एक्ट एज अ फ्रेश सोर्स ऑफ न्यू डिस्टर्बेंस एंड दैट विल कॉज दैट विल प्रोड्यूस अ सेकेंडरी वेवलेट व्हिच व्हेन टेंडेंशियली ज्वाइन विल गिव यू द शेप ऑफ न्यू वेव फ्रंट इन व्हिच द लाइट हैज ट्रैवल्ड एट एनी लेटर टाइम इन द फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन so is it clear that hygel's principle is clear to you note it down so now we will be reading about the various shapes of wave fronts that can be formed due to various obstacles in the path of light suppose this is a plane mirror and the light ray is incident these are the wave fronts or the light ray because plane wave front hong hai reason infinite source light aari hogi and distance source hai to plane wave front se khabar hai to jab wo incident karegi is plane mirror pe so due to striking on this plane mirror this surface will strike first the wave front this part let us suppose this is ab wave front so this is a and this is b and this is your plane mirror so a strikes first so a will bounce back first and b will take some time to travel that means a will bounce back first and b will take some time so it will be molded like this that means the direction will be like this correct a will be bounced back in this manner so this is your incident wave front incident plane wave front and this is your reflected plane wave front now suppose you have a curved mirror that is concave mirror you are talking about and you have again a plane wave front that is a light traveling in the form of wave front travels in the forward direction at this instant of time when it strikes the mirror surface this a and b part so they will be here and here so they will strike at this surface first and the middle portion will continue to move forward correct so if we have a particular direction of light whenever we trace the light with the help of a curved mirror okay so what will happen this direction parallel will come out of the focus this again parallel will come out of the focus but this will retrace its path correct so now you can Easily judge. See, जब ये corners यहाँ पे पहले टक रहा है और ये बीच वाला portion अभी भी आगे travel कर रहा है तो इस इन corners की speed effect हो गई है पर इसकी speed अभी भी वही same है जो speed of light की थी correct तो इनकी speed effect होने से they will mold first and this will remain in this direction only so the directions come out to be this the wave fronts will travel in this direction बात समझ में आ गई सपोज यही चीज हम कॉन्वेक्स मिरर से करते तो क्या होता ट्रैवलिंग विल मूव डाइवर्च दिस अगेन ट्रैवलिंग विल डाइवर्च दिस इज इंसिडेंट प्लेन वे फ्रंट दिस इज अगेन डाइवर्च एंड दे विल अपियर टू मीट ऑन द पॉइंट कॉल्ड फोकस नाउ व्हेन इट विल मूव फॉरवर्ड the middle portion will strike first so it will be curved and they will be bended in this direction so the direction of the rays let us suppose they are traveling so a point and b point will collide afterward with the mirror curved surface but the middle portion between a and b will collide before am i right so that means if this is the curved mirror and this surface will strike first middle portion 
so it will bend and in this way the direction will go so the direction of curved surface will be this so this is your incident plane wave front and this is your reflected curved wave front that is in the shape of convex surface and this is again your incident plane wave front and this is your reflected curved wave front from concave surface i hope this is understood now suppose we have a prism and this is the wave front correct now you see to it as it will move forward this part this part that is the bottom portion will enter first into the tensile medium and the upper portion of your wave front will be in the rear medium so there will be a change of speed due to change in refractive index there is a change of speed so now the bottom portion will encounter a change of speed that is it will become slower in speed and the upper portion is still in air that is rarer medium so it will be faster so when something goes like this and the bottom portion becomes slower so the tilt in this direction becomes because this portion is traveling faster ye hai lower portion dheere ho gaya hai density ya refractive index mein change aane ke karan और ये अभी भी रेयर मीडियम में तो तेज चल रहा है ऐसे करते करते ये टेल्थ होता जाएगा और एक पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट में जब ये बाहर निकलेगा तो क्या होगा नाउ अब ये पूरा जब ये लॉन्गर डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल कर रहा है और ये शॉर्टर डिस्टेंस तो शॉर्टर डिस्टेंस में भी ये यहां से अगर शिफ्ट भी हो गया तो ये जल्दी निकल जाएगा यानी कि इसकी जो एनकाउंटर होगी पोजिशन और जो इसकी पोजिशन एनकाउंटर होगी तो इससे जो लाइट रे आई और इससे जो लाइट रे है ये तो बैंड ज्यादा होगी और ये बैंड कम होगी तो इस वे में आपको एक वेव फ्रंट बाहर मिलेगा इस डायरेक्शन में अंडरस्टॉट ड्यू टू वेरिएशन इन स्पीड ड्यू टू वेरिएशन इन रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ द मटेरियल ऑफ द ऑब्स्टिकल इन द पाथ ऑफ लाइट ओके सो दिस इज योर इंसिडेंट वेव फ्रंट incident plane wave front and this is your refracted plane and inclined wave front understood i hope ye baat samajh mein aa gayi hai ye sare kahin na kahin puchte jaate hain so note kar liye सपोज करते हैं अब हम कॉन्वेक्स लेंस से बनाते हैं ये कोई कॉन्वेक्स लेंस है ये आपका वेव फ्रंट है तो जब ये वेव फ्रंट यहां पर आएगा इस जगह पे तो जो बॉटम पोर्शन है वो तो डेंसर मीडियम में आ चुका होगा जो मिडिल पोर्शन है और जो बॉटम पोर्शन होगा वो अभी भी बाहर है करेक्ट तो क्या होगा मिडिल पोर्शन की स्पीड चेंज जाएगी आप देखिएगा क्यों बिकॉज इट इज इन द डेंसर मीडियम एंड द टॉप पोस्ट एंड द बॉटम पोस्ट विल स्टिल बी इन रेयर मीडियम सो दिस विल बिकम स्लोअर यू ट्रेवल कर रहा है पहले ये वाला पोर्शन डेंसर मीडियम में आ गया और ये अभी भी रेयर मीडियम है सो दिस पोर्शन विल बिकम स्लोअर एंड हेंस इट विल दे विल बी फास्टर एंड इट विल बी स्लोअर सो द कर्थ सर्विस विल इमर्ज लाइक दिस करेक्ट so now the surface will emerge somewhat like this i hope you understand this is your emerging or refracted wave front and this is your incident wave front i suppose that this is clear to you सिर्फ स्पीड को ध्यान में रखते हुए हमें चीजें करनी है और ये याद रखना है कि हर नया सोर्स पिछले वाले सोर्स की डिस्टर्बेंस से ही बनता है इज इट ओके 
you can mark the direction in this way. These are the direction of light. Suppose there is a convex lens and a point source is placed at its focus. This is a point source and it is placed at its focus. So all the light rays will travel in this direction and you have to find out the emerging wavefront shape. So they will pass parallel because at focus the light rays goes after reflection goes parallel. So the, in the emergent wavefront will be plane wavefront. Okay? I hope you understand this part. If the light is coming uh, intercepted by the earth uh, from a distant star, then also it will be a plane wavefront. Understood? Now we will be studying about the proof of the phenomenon of reflection and refraction with the help of Huygens wave theory that is Huygens principle. So we can say what we are studying is application of Huygens theory or principle to study first we are studying refraction. So if we can prove law of refraction with the help of Huygens wave theory, that means it is a valid result. And Huygens wave theory is correct because it is applicable to the phenomenon of ray optics also. So light exhibits wave nature and Huygens theory will be correct. Now, suppose there is a interface AB and the medium above the interface AB is rarer medium with refractive index mu1 in which speed of light is v1 meters per second and below it it is a denser medium in which the refractive index is mu2 and the speed of light is v2 meters per second suppose a plane wave front PQ is incident at point P and it is traveling in this direction from P dash to P in rare medium that is with velocity V1 with effective index mu1 and we can say that when this light is incident and it takes the time T correct we can shorten it up so that it is not to be eliminated this is the PQ wave front and we can say that when light is incident, it will travel from Q to B, Q to this B point, right, in time T. So, the speeds of light in medium 1 and 2 are V1 and V2 respectively. And both the mediums has refractive indices mu1 and mu2 respectively, right? So, up kya hoga? Let T is time taken by the light to travel from Q to B. Q se B and the light ne kita rangi hai T. So QB distance travel karne mein. QB distance. Distance speed to time. So ye speed. Is medium ki gini jayegi? So speed will be V1 and time is T. This is your equation number 1. Now since we have already studied in geometrical optics that this will be a normal. And since we are considering this wavefront, so this will be our angle of incidence. Correct? We are considering wave front. Okay. This is 90 degree because plane wave front will always be a 90 degree phenomenon. This is again a normal. So it should go like this, but it will bend towards a normal and hence it will result in this phenomenon. Correct? So what we do is here the time well again we are talking about t time only. So also here also we will talk about the time t only. 
but here the speed will be v2 so what we are going to do is we will put a compass here and take the radius of v2 into t because the distance traveled should be v2 into t in this particular time in this medium अगर इस मीडियम में t टाइम में v1 t डिस्टेंस है तो नीचे वाले मीडियम में t टाइम में v2 t डिस्टेंस ट्रैवल होना चाहिए नाउ इफ दिस इज द डिस्टेंस v2 t तो हम क्या करेंगे यहां से एक कंपास का पॉइंट रखेंगे और रेडियस v2 t लेके कोई आर्क कट करेंगे और उस आर्क से हम इसके ऊपर एक टेंजेंट मार्क करेंगे क्योंकि हमने यही पढ़ा था कि टेंजेंशियल एंगल ऑफ सेकेंडरी वेवलेट्स को जहां पे कट करेगा उससे जो फॉर्मेशन होता है वो हमारे लिए वेव फ्रंट के होता है सो दिस इज माय इंसिडेंट वेव फ्रंट करेक्ट एंड दिस विल बी माय रिफ्रैक्टेड वेव फ्रंट ओके सो लेट अस सपोज दिस एज पार्ट एस नाउ The distance travel in t time from p to s, p to s will be v2 into t. If you can now see that from triangle PQB, this triangle I'm talking about, sine of i can be written as perpendicular that is QB divided by hypotenuse that is PB. And this QB can be written as v2 into t, if you can see here, correct? And again from triangle PS, and this will be again because of the tangent, so it will be an arbitrary concept. PSB. So sine of r, this will be refracted difference, so this will be angle of refraction. Now sine of r, sine of r will be perpendicular, that is PS divided by QB divided by PB. So PS is V2 into T divided by PB. V2 into T. Okay. Now I am rubbing this part, and we can say that sine I by sine R, if you can see, is V1 T divided by PB divided by V2 T divided by PB. Cancel T T cancel, so it will be one by V two. This means sine of I divided by sine of R will be equals to V one by V two. Understood? Note it down, and then I will explain you a very good concept with it. So now we have learned about refractive index concept. It can be C by V one, and mu two can be C by V two. So if you can divide mu two by mu one, you will get c by v two divided by c by v one, which will be v one by v two, which is same here, right? So we can write sine i by sine r equals to v one by v two, which is equals to mu two by mu one, and by cross multiplying this concept, you can say. mu1 of sin i equals to mu2 of sin r which is snell's law for refraction and hence it is applicable for the study of refraction on the basis of huygens wave theory understood you can again determine one more thing from this concept and that is Since we are writing sin i by sin r equals to v1 by v2, and we have studied that v1 can be written as f lambda 1 and v2 can be written as f lambda 2. How? This is speed. Speed is actually distance upon time. When it is distance upon time, so we can say that if there are n number of wavelengths. For lambda one in refractive index uh, in medium one that is regular medium, and if the total distance covered in terms of wavelengths is n lambda one, so then that distance will be v one into t, and for this will be n lambda two that is v two into t. So if you can remember, v one can be this when divided, this can be cut it out, and v one by v two can be written as lambda one by lambda two 
because upon t becomes frequency that is constant and that can be written lambda by f this is also f so v so we can write v1 is equal to uh, that becomes 1 by t 1 by t this is divided by t right and divided by t becomes frequency reciprocal of time becomes frequency so that can be f lambda 1 by f lambda 2 which i have written here so when you divide it you will get the ratio of lambda 1 by lambda 2 that is sin i by sin r so this shows that frequency does not change even if there is a change in the medium of the two uh, surfaces topmost and the bottommost the frequency is dependent on the source not on the medium through which the light is traveling so frequency remains constant and it is dependent only on the source of light and not on the medium through which the light is traveling okay is it clear now now we will study the second portion that is second phenomenon that is reflection on the basis of Huygens wave theory so this is a perfectly reflecting body reflecting surface this is your incident light and you have an incident wave front here right this will be your normal and the light is traveling in this direction from p dash to p correct so now what will happen if this is my incident wave front so again a light will travel from this part to this part that is if pq is the incident wave front and this is 90 so the time taken by q by light ray to travel from q to portion b will be same for the time taken by the light ray to travel from p to a particular point let us suppose t how if we place a compass here and this distance qb will be suppose this is medium 1 and here speed of light is v1 let us suppose so since it is same medium we don't need reflective index now qb will be v1 into t we are talking about time t is taken from light to travel from q to point b if we place a arc a compass point here and we make an arc the arc with a radius of v1 into t let us suppose it cuts somewhat here right so by placing we can write it's a cut somewhat here so this this is the portion and when this envelope will be formed when we will draw tangent from this point correct so tangent will cut it at this point and this will be your point of new wave front so now this pb will be new wave front so if you can see from triangle this is uh, i can write it here pq is incident wave front and this TB is your reflected wave front, right? So if you can see QB, that is V1 into T, and again TB will also be with the same speed only and with the same amount of time. So it will also be covering the same distance and same time, that is V1 into T. So from triangle, let us suppose this is angle of incidence, right? So this will be your angle of incidence and if this is normal, we travel like this. So this will be your angle of reflection, this will be angle of incidence and this will be your angle of reflection, correct? Now, <clears throat> what's happening is from triangle PQB which is congruent to triangle PTB how these are 90 90 both have the common pb and both uh, side qb and tb are of same equal and that is v1 into t so by rhs congruency correct so if they are congruent we can easily write 
that by CPCT angle I will be equals to angle R, right? Because you can say that angle QPB will be equals to angle TBP, that is angle I is equals to angle R, which proves law of reflection. And hence we can say that both the laws of reflection and refraction can be proved on the basis of Huygens wave theory or Huygens principle. I hope you understand.